Yo, what's going on, everybody? What's up, guys? What's up, dude? What's happening? Okay. Hey, so what's up, Investors Drive Nation? Today, we're going to have our boy on, Sam. Sam Roysom. Just happens to... Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. He just happens to be... uh, My cousin. His cousin. But that's not why I brought him on here. Brought me on here for bigger, bigger reasons. But anyway, Investor Thrive, uh, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're going to, you know, bring our our guy on, Sam. He's an expert closer, uh, you know... He is an ultimate closer, you know, amazing salesman. So we brought him on here. Uh, he is not affiliated uh, specifically with wholesaling or real estate, but if he did want to join in on real estate, he'd crush it. You already know that. But he's, he's cho- chosen a different path, but is interested in real estate and d- dabbles in it a little bit with his pops. So we're going to have him on there. Corey, who's sponsoring? What, what studio are we in and who's sponsoring this video? We're in the Investor Thrive studio. That's right. Welcome. Investor Thrive. What is Investor Thrive, Corey? So Investor Thrive is a uh, like a business we started to help people in their personal lives and in their uh, real estate professions. Yeah. Because so if, if you wanna if you wanna learn more about it, go to investorthrive.com. Um, check it out. We got some courses on there, free courses that you can check out. Learn right. about wholesaling. Learn about real estate. All the good stuff. Free courses for you. We want to give back because when we started wholesaling, we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. But now we know through lots of study that's yeah, really tailored to hard work newer trial people error. right trial and error is Whew. literally trial and error what is the it is the game yeah you know, i wish it wasn't right <laughs> i wish you didn't have to just you, trial and succeed trial and succeed but it's trial and error and a lot of failing and if you're not ready to fail get out of get out of business because it's it, it's inevitable but you get, it's success is inevitable if you don't give up fail your way to the top right fail your way to the top. Saying. so sam Ultimate closer, the ultimate salesman. So we want to bring you on, talk to you about your life, and uh, see what value you can provide Investor Drive Nation. And hopefully, we can all learn together. So let's, uh, you know, let's do a l- quick bio, man. Let sure. people know who you are. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Um, this is a really nice place. Investor Thrive has you guys saddling the right <laughs> horse, man, because it they, looks it looks good up in here. They really did take care of it. It's, it's nice. <laughs> I was way, it's way cooler than I thought. What were you now, thinking? Now we just need a sign. I, I thought a garage with like some cardboard <laughs> and like around the mic, like eight mile. But you no, know. we got the, uh, we <laughs> like eight mile. Yeah. <laughs> you know. No, but we got the little soundproof little things. Yeah. So they've, they've done a really good job. Thanks for appreciating the best for, for sure. That. It's cool. Yeah. Um, a little bit about me, like I I met these guys at school. Corey and I were roommates at Rick's College, a.k.a. BYU-Idaho. That's right. Uh, 2008. And I went to school for liberal arts and wasn't too good at college. Did you go to BYU-Idaho? Yeah. You were going, okay. Before I thought our you, missions. Oh, before the before missions. Before okay. 2008. I was there for a semester. Liberal arts. What is that? Music, okay. painting, all that kind of stuff. That's and the piano man over here. Piano. He all plays that. the piano, and, too. and I loved it, but you kind of look down the barrel of the gun, and you're like, well, how am I going to have a family right. doing art or drawing yeah. cartoons? Unless you're like, you know, the Marvel guy, whatever that dude's name was. <laughs> right, Stan. Stan. Uh, Stanley. 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 Like Stan Lee. Rest in peace. Yeah, R.I.P. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I didn't do well. I ended up failing out of school my first semester. Went and served a two-year Mormon mission in Knoxville, Tennessee with the Southerners. And growing up, uh, I had a cousin who I always looked up to. Mm-hmm. And I remember he went out and he had an APX flat brim. And uh, he'd come home with boats and these... APX you know, is that... Uh, alarms, alarms, APX, which is now Vivint, formerly known as oh, APX. Day, yeah. This is a long time ago. Flat brim... <laughs> Flat brim, <laughs> belt buckle, the polos. They used just, to have those parties, you know, at college and stuff. Oh, they still recruit there. But I saw him, and he didn't go to school. And I saw him be a huge success. He had a beautiful wife and family, had a nice house, nice car, boats, all that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. it was like door-to-door sales, which I was like, that's like a scam. Did right? you say like, boats? He has more than one boat? He's had a few different boats. Oh, yeah, Not like all at one time. Oh, I'm, like, I'm yeah. just saying like... He must be balling. He, he's... He, been a huge success keith dyer huge success shout out shout out i learned so much from him he's one of the main guys that i've i take a lot from but um so i just was going to give it a shot got back from a mission had a couple different random sales jobs just in between uh like the summer Uh, that fall i worked at a place called online image they do google like ad spaces. I know you guys do pay-per-click sometimes Mm -hmm. in this industry. Mm -hmm. Um, We would sell local and organic search. So I got to learn that space of what people are searching and what type of businesses are looking and what the, 
you know, the customer is looking for, whether right. it's, you know, plumbing or that type of stuff. So I started selling that and I got pretty good. Like it was a brand new branch of the company and I ended up working really hard and getting to be like the top closer there. Nice. And then I went out to do some preseason trips in the cold here in Utah. Did you go with your... your My cousin's your, company. That guy, mm-hmm. okay. It was Platinum Protection. Shout out Platinum, no longer around, but... Uh, Shout out. Uh, I learned from a guy named Rob Reimer. He was my first manager. And, you know, everyone has this expectation, summer sales, you're going to make all this money. And well, that's how they get you. Yeah. So I had Part some... Part of the pitch. That is the pitch. I had some pretty lofty goals. What were they? I, I think I wanted to make 150 grand my first summer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. Just, get, just get out Good there. Good luck, baby. Well, Start and, off with a bang, huh? And my cousin was a baller. Yeah. So he did go do that. His, his first, first year? His first year. Oh, gosh. He was, and so He's was that ca- one guy they use on all the pitches to be like, hey, this guy first year did this. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, okay. Mm-hmm. And so I, I kind of thought, okay, well, he did that. Like, I can do that, too. Mm-hmm. And the company ended up going out of business, so we went over to Apex vivant and our market was seattle which is where i'm from i'm from tacoma which is about 45 minutes south and so it was like oh cool i'll kind of be by my family and i'll go sell and right so get out there and and knock on some doors and lo and behold people don't just lay over and decide wow. to buy stuff no way brother so I, I was getting rocked um fast forward four months uh, you know most people quit at what you did dish. When do people quit? Uh, within the first month, mainly. Yeah, and they sell how many? Two, three? Yeah. Well, dish was a little different, but still like... A low amount, yeah, right? Yeah. So four months in, I'd sold about 25. I'd had 13 ripped out of the house, meaning people had canceled, saying, oh, hey, gosh. we don't want this crap. Come and take oh, it out. Oh, no. Um, and I would wake up every day m- really depressed. And stressed. I mean, like... I. I literally would lay on my floor before the meeting and I would like have tears in my eyes. Like I was so afraid to go knock. I hated it. Just all the rejection. Dude, wow. And so it was not glorified at all. I'd I'd made basically my hourly wage. I did the math on it like this last summer was basically around like three bucks an hour was what I was getting paid. Yeah. Well, you were working when you do door to door sales, like not like 10 to nine, right? Or I don't Mm -hmm. know what hours you were working, but we'd go out early. We'd have a meeting at like 11, 12 and then from one until nine. So eight, nine hours during the week. And then Saturdays, you know, 10, 12 dinner. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And so I was making no money. And just like a mission. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was, it was basically free. I was letting a lot of people know about Vivint. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Not a lot of interested people, but... It's crazy the marketing they're getting just from free marketing. It was anyway. cra- It was wild. And so I kind of got to this point where I was like, all right, I'm going to finish this. Like, I learned to kind of be a finisher because I used to quit on everything. I was like, I'm just going to f- stick when this out. When did you stop quitting on everything? Do you have a time in your life where you're like, hey, stop? I've, the two years, finishing okay. my mission, gotcha. I would say that gets the credit. And this experience, too, like... You know, I was, I've been really talented at a lot of stuff, but I would just quit when it got hard, got whether it. it was musicals, diving. Like, as soon as it got a little bit hard, I'd throw in the towel. So Piano, throw in the towel. So that's over now. Oh. I love it, dude. That's Never awesome. again. Never again. Got it. Never. Sorry to interrupt. I just, no. Uh, that's it's a great question. It's a great question. And so I had a regional come, like you guys, how you're coaching people. Like, I had a guy, a mentor, come and, and shadow me on the doors. And he's like, dude, your pitch is flawless. Really? It's like, it's like your pitch is perfect. You just don't transition at the right time to get inside Ooh. the house. He's like, watch, we're gonna knock this door and we're gonna sell the next house that you. That's pitch. great. That's a great critique. Oh, it was perfect. Yeah. And on the next door, I got to that same spot where I struggled. Everybody, he's like, dude, everyone listens to you. They're all smiling, listening, and then they just go, ah, not interested because you don't transition. You're mm-hmm. scared of going inside. Yeah. And so he transitioned for me. We went inside and we closed that deal. And we Never got look back, baby. We got back to the car, and he's <laughs> like, "Sam, like, you're you're a hundred fifty, two hundred account guy. You're just not in the right office. You need to go to a different market and just give this one more shot." Because you were at home. That's probably why I was in Tacoma. That, yeah. I was Who living was in an apartment. Mentor? What's Tyler Mickelson. Tyler Mickelson? Shout out Tyler Mickelson. He's a director of sales at he'll, Sunrun, one oh, of he'll, the biggest. He'll solar. see this. He'll see this podcast. We'll uh, I'll, make sure. I'll make him. I'll make sure. I'll send make him a link. Sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Um. But he just, he gave me a little bit of belief in myself that I could do it. That's like half the battle is just belief, right? Belief, belief and not quitting. You, do it, yeah. you throw those two things together, like you're bound to stumble upon some type of luck. You know what's really interesting about not quitting? There's a book called The Dip that Jerry Norton told me about, and the guy told me about. It. He said sometimes, you know, like nobody wants to quit, right? That's like, no. But sometimes 
it's a, it's like you got to know, not saying for you and your situation, but some people, they just keep going and going, and it's like, hey, sometimes it's okay to quit. But it's hard to say that, right? Because after it's like, well, is it okay to quit? But anyway, the book, The Dip, if you read it, it talks about like sometimes it, it, it is more beneficial to like bail, right? 100%. Sometimes so you got to transition. Maybe, maybe think of it more of a transition to like... You're right, right, right. Learn from your mistakes and keep going. Yeah, not like complete. transition to something better, right? Right. You don't want to quit that's, and just that's give up. That's what the premises of the book is. It's it's not that you just give up. It's just like, hey, maybe you're just trying something that isn't the right fit for you, and it's better to transition, and you'll find a better way. Yeah, Yeah. definition of insanity, right? Repeating the same thing with getting the same result, expecting something different. It's just, I mean, of course. Um, exactly, okay. So he's like, hey, man. There's a pet-friendly hotel with some room down in Houston. We're doing extension. Pet-friendly? So, what? Did you have a pet? Then? Well, there's just a bunch of guys that have dogs and oh. pets and stuff, and I didn't have one, but one of my roommates did. And he's like, "Just go give it one more month. Give it a shot. And if it's not for you, it's not for you." And I was like, "Cool. I'll go down there." Like he's like, "I'll pay for your plane tickets." I was like, oh, "Sweet. Like no risk." And so I went there and I'd done 25, um, and then that month I was the number one extension rep for the whole company. I did 30 in that month and my whole life was changed. I got there Wednesday, I sold uh, one Wednesday, two Thursday, one Friday, and four on Saturday. What, so, What could you say was, was it mindset? Was it the transition? Was it getting out? Of, what, would, what was that one thing you could point to that was like, hey, that, that did it? Uh, it sounds so cliche, but I just didn't give up. I really just didn't quit. So on that dip, you didn't give yeah, it up. It seems like the, kept going. the not quitting with just a little critique, right? Right, right. That made all the difference. Yeah. That's he, awesome, man. It, but if you think about the dip, like I was talking about earlier, like you did make a change, right? You did transition sure. to another place, so it, it worked. Yeah. 100%. Staying I had, in Tacoma. I had, I had to get that little fine tune, and that's what, you know, if you guys are just starting wholesaling or you're just starting in real estate, don't go and make a bunch of mistakes. These guys have the wisdom to listen to what they did yeah. and not do what they did for three years, and you can start <laughs> closer to where they're at. Dude, it's hilarious. <laughs> like, when me and Corey first started Wholesale, we, we teamed up with this uh, broker, and he was like, we, we, we gave it, we split the business 30, 30, 30, you know, because we're third. like yeah. the third. And he was like, the value I provide you guys is experience. So after we failed for like, six like three months with him we're like hey this isn't working out this is probably like probably better if we just sit part ways months. it was like six S to nine months probably six to nine months after failing for that long uh we basically went to him and say hey we're gonna leave um it's just not working to give you 30 percent when we're not even really that successful and he's like he's like uh w you shouldn't leave because i i provide the experience and i'm like but bro like your experience hasn't helped us right. get to where we need to go and well, he was experienced in real estate, just not in wholesaling. In wholesaling, right? And I Which remember what we needed help when he was. He was trying. We were trying to leave, and uh, so we were talking about the cold calling. We hired like a bunch of cold callers, our friends. We we're paying them fifteen bucks an hour, mm -hmm. which is a mistake. You don't pay, you know, people fifteen bucks an hour to cold call. That's like a five dollar an hour job in Egypt. But anyway, he was like, you know, you you guys are gonna leave my experience behind if you leave, and I was like, bro, you. We, we spent 15 bucks an hour. Like, why didn't you tell us with your experience that that was a bad idea instead of us wasting all our money? He's like, uh, you know, he just didn't have that experience that, like, we needed, like, what needed. But we've had, we've had other mentors that have been a big help to us. Yeah, no, mentors are huge. So. Dude, I mean. But no one's going to put you on, though. It yeah. still comes down to what you're going to do. Every like, day, dude. The you critiques. you produce the results. Y it's it's going to be you out there, like, on the phone, in the house, what, what it's still going to come down to you, but it really is important. Like there's four main guys in my lifetime as a salesperson that I can say like, without them, I'm not who I am today. That's Keith Dyer, who I already said, my first manager, Rob Reimer, um, Tyler Mickelson, that regional, uh, shout out to Jason, uh, Durfee, Zach Ard and Brady Martinez. They were managers in my Houston squad. They did a lot for me too, but, and Jordan Melhoff, those four guys, I mean, but they still didn't go in all my closes forgot, with me. You forgot one, dude. <laughs> the one that worked. No, I was going to say the one that carried you through the sand. <laughs> the shout, shout out to Jesus. To Jesus. Oh, well, he I mean, got you. I mean, that's first that's of all. That's a given. He's that's for sure. And also the greatest salesman ever. Because I know you were probably praying during that sales. Oh. You were, I mean, we all were. We're praying for a deal. I remember when I'd be knocking, I'd be like, I just need one deal. 
please. I, I never prayed for deals. You I never actually, did? I, I would. I, I prayed for opportunities. Opportunities? I prayed for opportunities for them, that I'd run into the right people. They'd thought about my product. They were talking about it last night. I'd pray for, like, circumstance to work out, and then I'd go to work as if it were, you know, yeah, to make it real. I, but I remember I had, I, my last couple years of selling dish, like, I wouldn't zero out. Like, I went, like, two seasons where I would never zero. And there was this one time, it was getting, like, 8.30 at night, and I was like, I can't zero. And I, like, said a prayer. I was like, I got to find somebody. And some little lady opened that door, like, 8.30, and I got it. And I kept my streak going for, like, two years. It it's amazing. Crazy. Yeah, that it's honestly amazing. crazy. But, uh, yeah. What, what's the, So a lot of people ask me that question, like, how am I so consistent? So you did it for two years. What, what's your thoughts on uh, consistency? Consistency is you, you – I would never stop knocking, period. Never. Like, Fist to door. Yeah. I would always no someone didn't answer, boom, boom, all day. Because uh, if you don't knock the doors, if you it's the same thing with wholesaling, right? If you don't make in your offers daily, you you're not gonna get deals. It was it's the exact thing, same thing with knocking doors. Like if you don't hit those doors, you ain't gonna have the opportunities. Sounds like it comes down to a numbers game. It's a numbers yeah. game. That's, what you that's lack what it was for me. What you lack in skill you make up for in numbers. So if you're new to the game, what you lack in skill, you're gonna make up for through repetition. Just bottom line. So you got to yeah. you got to get out there and get your reps in. And we struggle. But also, with like what you can do through effort. Like skill can't even beat that. Skill cannot beat effort, like, dude. It just can't. Like like in our business, we struggle 100%. with the effort sometimes. Just because you know you you have a good month, you know maybe uh, like the, with door to door is a little easier with effort because you're like I'm only here it's for three months. It's also very straightforward as like what you have to do. Oh, you talking about with door to door? You go knock. Yeah. And, and, talk and, and it's with like a three or four month period. It's mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm going to freaking go to town this time because this is my time. With the with the day to day job, it's like, you know, maybe there's a couple other things that I can do. There's other stuff that gets caught other up. Parts of the business. Yeah. But it all comes down to consistency if you wanted to do it. Like, 100%. Consistency runs the game. And then you have to, you want to peel back some of the deeper questions that you have with yourself. Like, what drives you as a person? You know, like what's going to get you to burn the midnight oil after you get a sixty thousand dollar check? Because mm -hmm. if you're a guy that's going to go vacation, well, that sixty thousand dollar check you maybe made in a month or a couple weeks or whatever, divide that by the amount of time you're not working. Right. So it wasn't a sixty thousand dollar check. It mm -hmm. was a twenty thousand dollar check. It was a ten thousand dollar check. It was a five thousand dollar check. So you have to ask yourself, like, what? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And then. Who's who am I gonna pay this forward to? What right. am I gonna What am I gonna give from receiving all this? Exactly right. Like me and Corey have talked about this plenty of times. It's uh, what drives you. It shouldn't be money because it, this isn't w knocking doors. Is I mean, yeah, gr money's great, but it's not really. It sucks. I know I've done it. You've done it. W our job is tough. It, what 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 you're really doing this for is to build. We're building something. We want to build something great. Leave behind something, and that's a legacy, right? And I'm sure that's what. You, while you're working hard, you're trying to build something. Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, like, what else am I going to do? <laughs> I know it's a practical thing to think about. Like, what else are you going to do? I think, yeah, exactly. Get famous on TikTok? Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Like, and then what? Easy come, mm -hmm. easy go. Yeah, I mean, that's I'm sure those point. people are, get yeah. famous quick, and they, they're that's off. That's great. They fall off quick. Clap, yeah. clap, but then. That's because they haven't really created an impact. Like the, the one-hit wonders, man, of the 90s. Yeah, I mean, like, music. if you get famous on TikTok and it was easy, like, you haven't done anything to create an impact. Yeah. That's yeah. so true. People yeah. that last created a lasting impact. I think it was Dale Carnegie. Um, they found his Bible folded, and inside his Bible was a little note to himself, and it was a, his life goal. First half of my life, I want to accumulate money. The second half, I want to give it all away. Dang. The man amassed... Nope. The man amassed four hundred million dollars, and we're talking this is the twenties. It's worth like five or six billion. That's so cool, man. And he gave it all away. So you're a big proponent and uh, big into reading books, like Think and Grow Rich, all that, right? A hundred percent. Do you have uh, your definite chief aim or your goal that you'd like to share with the Investors Live Nation right now, or do you have one on like, the top? Of as your far head? as money is well, concerned, well, no, like what, what you're you trying, like D Dale Carnegie's like your ultimate goal, your right? Ultimate, his goal was to make money, give it away. Other people's goal is to uh, make an impact. I don't know. Just I was wondering, do you have like some you're trying to achieve where you're like, this is my purpose. Do you have one? It's it's okay if you don't have one. It's I, it's not it's not specific, but it's just in in how I live, mm -hmm. like every day. I mean, th that's such a deep question. It is a deep question. It, it's probably but, longer. But I do but I do have answers for it. It's it, you know, the short 
the short answer is like I want to become like Jesus. I want to become yeah. like the greatest salesman that's, that's, that's to ever walk the that's planet. That's literally mine. Like mine, not to get spiritual or like uh, sure. religious with everybody. It's but it's to become a true disciple of Jesus Christ or to become like like a perfect. Because Jesus Christ, if you you know if you believe in that, uh, which I do, it was perfect, right? So what mm-hmm. is the purpose of life? It's to become perfect, like become like him. So that's my goal, right? And that's through treating people with respect, being honest with all your you know your fo- fellow man, doing all that, because then you're like then you're leaving behind something great. Because when you die, uh, like what are people going to remember you for? They're not going to remember you for your money. They're not going to remember for you. Maybe for investor thrive, who knows? But they're going to remember. Yo, Nate was a great guy. Sam was awesome. He always, you know, I got in a car wreck. He picked me up or something. You know, that's what people right. remember, and that's what she, the definite chief aim is mine. And it sounds like yeah. You kinda I mean, and, and money is a great measuring tool of value provided. Like. Every dollar that's in anyone's bank account is an IOU from the marketplace saying, hey, mm-hmm. you provided this much value, thank you. It's, yeah. a, it's a thank you card. It's true. So, but there's plenty of it. You know, money, all that, like, time is way more valuable than money. Like, you can always get more money. But you, once you spend a day, days are expensive. Right. Every day you spend is one less day here. You know, average is 28,000 days. Okay, like, so how yeah. many have you spent already? That's a good question. I saw someone on Facebook. They posted how much time I have left in my life. They did. He did something like that. He like calculated how many days he had left before he died. So that was pretty interesting. Um, one of the things that like I know Corey and Thank I have you. talked about, like Jordan Peterson talks about, like it, when you take when you do take full responsibility for your life, you realize that you want to give and give and give and give. Because once you kind of figure out a secret sauce or a recipe for success, like the natural thing is to want to share that with other people. Exactly. So other people can feel. That's why we create Investor Thrive, trying to help out the world. I'm, d- I'm, I'm being serious. Like, it was a struggle. And I mean, business is a struggle. But like, when you're brand new, you don't know what to do at all. Zero. You don't know. So we're telling you guys, Investor Thrive Nation, make freaking offers on all the houses you can get. The Just like with knocking doors, go knock some freaking doors. <laughs> the interesting thing too is, like we are talking about like these big ultimate goals we have, but it's through doing those little daily things. Oh gosh, that gets you to oh, where yeah. you want to go, right? Small. So like, yep. if your goal is to make a bunch of money, give it all away. Like doing the little things each day, like making offers. That's how you're gonna get there. Yep. It's not. It's, yeah, it's There's a book out there called The Compound Effect. If you haven't read it, like it's a it's a quick read. I'm not a reader. I have ADD. Like I hate reading books. Audible, is you, tough. YouTube, man, you can pretty much get anything on YouTube. But the compound effect is one. The compound effect is one of those books that altered my way of thinking and knowing that if I'm just consistent and I don't quit long enough, like whatever result I want in any aspect of my life, like I can have that. Hundred percent. The slight edge. Slight edge. I mean to be real, those there's thousands of those books. And they're just, all teaching the <laughs> same teach the small same minute thing. thing. It's crazy, but it's it's so such I mean, a simple like, thing. If you think about like these big goals, like what is like a big action you can do to like the quantum leap, right? To like, like make that goal. And it's usually not a big thing, no, right? It's not. Like, so you can sit around thinking about, like, how can I accomplish this big goal? But it's usually, like, something small and little that you do, like, consistently that 100%. turns into this big result. I mean, you like working out. You know, you know, that's it's just like working out. Yeah. You got to freaking. If everyone, if everyone in America could go work out for nine hours and be jacked or ripped or slim thick for the ladies, like, whatever, right? Slim they, thick. They'd all do it, right? <laughs> they'd, all, they'd all do it. Everyone right. would do it. Of but course. It's the death by a thousand paper cuts that no one wants to do. I don't want to do that. But if you're willing to risk, you know, for the extraordinary, you will never be ordinary. Like, it, you will become something that you never thought you could oh, become. Dude, you just said it. That's exactly right. And I think that's why a lot of people don't achieve success in this life because it's very hard. If it, someone wants to say it's easy, they're lying. It is. Whether you're awesome at sales. It wouldn't be worth it either. No. It definitely wouldn't be worth it. Like that TikTok stuff. Here, I don't follow TikTok. I don't watch any of that no, stuff. I mean, but no, I'm assuming I mean, some people <laughs> hit it big, and sure. then you know, easy come, easy go. It's probably not as fulfilling. You know, if I made a video today, somehow got viral, I, I wouldn't care. I'd be like, whoa, okay. I didn't, I didn't do anything for it. It's, it means nothing to me. That's why, by the way, Investor Nation, properties that are inherited in probate, they don't really mean anything to people because it's just like free money that they just got. They didn't work in the home. They didn't do much so they're these people are willing to sell asap because they're like hey i just earned 
got a nine hundred thousand or five hundred thousand dollar property, I'll sell it at three fifty just because it's new. It's just found money. Let's get rid of it. So, so if you guys had to break it down, like for all the people that are trying to get into wholesale, like what's the barrier to entry? Like what if you could go back and have a conversation with Nate and with Core, like when you guys were third in your business and paying people, like what would you? Like small rocks, right? What are the small things that you guys would say, hey, this is what you need to focus on. This is what you need to do every day until you get to this point, then transition to the next thing. Like what what advice would you give you guys? Like, That's a great offers. question, man. So no doubt. It's very interesting that you asked that question because the, the same advice we'd give ourselves three years ago is the same advice we're giving ourselves today. <laughs> it's the same. Offers, offers, offers. No, don't let anyone go by. Don't let, don't let, don't let, don't let yourself get tricked. Like, me and Nate, we'll, we'll sit and we'll talk about, like, what we need to do, strategize, and we'll do it for hours. And what is the conclusion we came to the other day? Make everyone an offer. Make more offers. It's that's, interesting. And that's, like, something we've done. It's, like, the basic part of the business. Well, it's what moves the business forward. Like, like we're, we're obviously trying to coach, right? We're trying to help people. Don't let the coaches and all that crap that's out there fool you guys. There's nothing that you can pay me and Corey to tell you or any coach that will give you a list or anything that's going to change your life. You freaking got to go out there and do it. We can we can motivate you to do it. but We can help hold you accountable. What's that? The Nike sign. That's the Nike. Just, yeah. just do it. That's just the craziest thing. So you're, you're asking me, again, what could we do that we could tell ourselves the same thing I, I didn't do today? I need to make more offers. It. Everything in your wholesaling business should be centered around making more offers. Yep. Like Taking action. Your value to the marketplace as a wholesaler is deals that you bring to the to investors. And you don't get deals without making offers. And that's making the right offers too, because you can waste a lot of time making whack offers that won't get accepted or they do get accepted and you're crap in your pants because you can't sell it. You the know? quantity and the quality of your offers should be your number one focus. Number one. So, and you can make offers anywhere. You can make offers on the MLS, on the on Zillow, on your own leads. Like, there's no excuse. If you want to get deals, the issue that people have is they give up before they hit it, right? Or they don't create a system that allows them to do it consistently. Right. Sweet. I mean, so it's, it's the same thing probably with knocking doors. Like, if you could get more people offers not knocking doors, you would, you'd be a billionaire, right? If you could sure. solve that problem of, like, you know, putting everybody out a door. I mean, that's why they, they, they try to recruit so heavy. Uh, yeah, and as you there, – there's two things. I, in addition to your guys' point of how to accelerate the process, like, so number one, I think, is we can all agree, is to take action. The first thing, you gotta, you got to go do it. Like, that's number one. But number two, like, you can take a dull machete out in the woods and go try, start cutting down trees, but, like, you're going to have a tough time. But if you sharpen your ax and go take action, so meaning the skills that it requires to get deals sold, to get deals done – the number of deals, like how you make offers, how you make them. Yeah, I mean that's that's huge. Let me give you an example today on making offers. It was really cool. So Jake, our acquisition guy, got an email, a text back from this guy, and he said, um, "Hey, I received your email offer three month th- about a month ago. I'm ready to accept your offer." Jake never talked to the Boom. guy, never did anything to the talk to him. He just sent an email with seventy thousand dollar offer. The guy said, "I'm ready to take it." Jake gets on the phone with him, and the guy said, "Out of Everybody that I filled a form for, you're the only one that made me a written offer. And I spent an hour trying to find it through my text message. Then I realized it was an email. So then I found out my email, and now I'm calling you back. So so to go off that, here's something that me and Nate talked about doing. Every single lead, every single person that's selling a house is getting three things from us, four things, an emailed offer, a text offer, Probably a written offer in the mail, shoot, and a verbal offer. That's good. The written is the the greatest th- gift, right? Like the, the ver- everything it's is good. serious when it's but written. It's, it, when it's put, that's what the guy said. It was the written offer that made it that I called you guys back. So, and I'm sure he filled up multiple forms and talked to you know because we all do this. We do this in our business. We're just trying to get on the phone with people so we can talk to them. They don't want to talk to you half the time. They want a freaking offer. And I'm sure that's the same thing when we were doing door-to-door. People don't want to talk to us. Just tell me what you can do quickly. If, if Even a door-to-door, think of this. Like, if 
this might not be so much for solar because you got to explain. But if you're sure. just a knock on the door and someone's like, I ain't got time, be like, hey, I get it. This is my op- this is what I can do in a short summary, written out like a pamphlet. You know, I, I wonder how much that would help. You know, I, you wouldn't use it as a it crush, makes it though. Feel I, real. I don't have any fluff in my sales presentation at all. There's zero. It's it's 100 transparency th- and it's quick. One thing you do do, like I know because I've seen you like practice and do all that stuff. One thing you do do is you write down for them, right? Like everything, like you everything. explain it, you write out the numbers, and so when they not only hear that, when they see it, it becomes real to them, right? Mm-hmm. So like when they see the numbers in the in a solar pitch, or when they see the written offer, that's when it's real. Hearing is like, or you can just hear someone yeah. ear, write out the other. Like half the time. That's so if you want to, if you want to do something that can help people see your words say say this this is a a go-to line if you're doing phone sales in front of someone say okay so imagine or hypothetically speaking imagine a purple elephant dancing purple elephant dancing you're going to think of that so if you're in wholesaling you're in solar security pest whatever if you sit down with a prospective buyer and you want them to start thinking what you're thinking say the word imagine it's one of the most powerful words words that you can use when you're trying to influence someone to do something because it's going to help them think what you're thinking it's pretty sweet it's I a very very powerful word Seller, use it. imagine nugget. imagine this so like imagine that, that you uh, just stress like imagine that you just sold your house to us the the transaction went smoothly you were happy with everything. You you're painting a picture for them. That's right? good. So when I'm when I'm sitting down with a solar buyer, right, like they're concerned about the holes in the roof. They have all these objections and these concerns. But if I say imagine and the scenario is not that, they're not imagining the concerns. They're now imagining the Imagine per- no the power better. bill. Imagine never having to pay the utility company another dollar of your hard earned money. That's, and redirecting yeah. that so, payment so into So then they're not thinking about the holes. They're not thinking about the anything they're thinking about the – that's how it feels. That's what a lot of J- – John Martinez, a lot of trainers say. It's like paint the picture of the end in mind. Not not so much the end in mind. He says yeah, it's – Kind of the end in mind, like the goal. The goal of like, hey, you know, I know life is tough right now, Mr. Seller, but, you know, Matt, where are you going to be, you know, once this gets sold and everything is done? Well, I'm going to be in J- Jamaica chilling with the ladies. Imagine being in Jamaica on the beach chilling with the ladies. That, that's where we're trying to get you. Now, I know there's a lot of stuff in the way. Yeah, so it do- that's something I don't use. So, like – that's pretty good. Pretty much all of business and sales is basically just like you executing your business model, right? Like all of business is about helping people get from point A to point B, right? Mm-hmm. Helping them make that progress that they want to make. And as a sa- and as a sales guy, like your job is to help them get there, make the decision. Like if 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 this is where they want to go, like I can help you get there, right? Yeah. And so painting that picture for them of what that looks like where when they get there um is is exactly what that's something i need to improve on in my job because i i'm i'm analytical i kind of don't paint the picture we don't paint the picture very good that's very good that's very good i mean so i think every sale that i've ever sold i sold it within the first five minutes of meeting someone wow every single one um we've all heard the old adage like sales is a transfer of energy everyone's heard that right um I, I agree with that statement, but the the real question is, well, how do you transfer energy? You don't come into, hey, like, we'd love to buy your, hey, buddy, old pal. Like, you know. like an infomercial. No, 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 no. Yeah. So what you want to know is if there's 20 reasons why they should sell you their property yeah. and there's one reason that they're actually going to sell the property, what good is it for you to go in there and start blabbing your mouth about all the reasons they should sell to you? Yeah, you no. got to find out what's you their got- why. Mm-hmm. Well, no, actually, when you you take ba- when you bring it this up, I actually do do this. Uh, I went to the, the house we did in Green Street, and the guy was talking about how he, he was selling because he wanted to go to Maryland on a on a ranch, Maine, Maine and on a in a nice farm ranch area. And I was like, man, that sounds like so much fun. What is that going to look like for you? And he's like, oh man, I'm going to be on my Spil- freaking spi- razor. Spilled it to you, yeah. Right? I'm going to be on my yeah. razor, just bo- mobbing around on my my land, chilling. And I'm like, that sounds great. That. That sounds like a dream, cause and I we kind of talked about like that's what I'd like to do, but I d- yeah kind of in a roundabout way you kind of find out what they're trying to accomplish and get them hyped about it. So yeah. he already it sounds like he already had that picture painted, right? Yeah. So it sounds like sometimes though pe- I don't think people have the picture, so the you, picture, that's, right? That's right. And he that's he where, had like, it, and I hyped on it because I was like, so that like, sounds like a great picture. A lot of people have a problem, right? Mm-hmm. But they don't know the solution yet. Like he he has a problem. 
he knew the solution and that's why that deal was so easy it was very easy right yeah. but like we we deal with a lot of people with a lot of problems but they don't have a they don't have a point b they don't have a picture they don't have a place where neither they're trying we, to get neither do we for them <laughs> <laughs> the difference between like lower tier lower tier sales guys and like the top tier is anyone can go sell the lay down person right oh, but yeah. it's it's creating the sales creating that environment mm-hmm. creating an atmosphere where like they have peace of mind in doing business with you and so when you're let's say you know we've all walked into a deal and the person's sitting there the arms are folded they're they're like up and down in you yep, and like you yep. feel the tension there's immediate it's true like my my basic formula for success is like cool like well, like where are you guys from cuz everyone has a place they're from if they're married how did you two meet i want to stir mm-hmm. up emotion i want to create like emotions between these two people right, okay right. awesome like what do you do for work oh really cool are those your grandkids and then I transition with wholesaling or solar, whatever it is, with like, okay, cool. My job is really simple today. Like, I'm not going to ask for your business if you don't completely understand what I'm here to explain to you. Mm. I'm just here to give you options, and we're going to find together the best route of success. Yeah, so you set that And if stage. it doesn't make sense, like, I'm not going to twist your arm. Like, that's not why I'm here. Mm-hmm. So I want to relieve the buying pressure. And then I say it comes down to two, dif- two basic things. Number one, you understanding. And number two, qualifying. Right. Like qualifying is the pullback. And that's that, huge. That is straight from Jordan Melhoff. So shout out Melhoff. Like that is one of the most genius sales approaches, which is basically, hey, number oh, one, understanding. Shoot, because you help them understand. What if we did that? We were like, yeah, number two, you have to qualify for our buying program. Number one, the only reason it's people don't sell, sell their house to us is because they don't understand it. Number two, <laughs> they don't qualify. I mean, I don't know. That's if it, basically I, what he says, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I don't know if it directly. This is trans- good stuff because t- to be real, like in my, I'm over to sales. Like I do deals and I help our acquisition guy. And so I come to a point where I'm like, we're good. We don't need to train anymore. But then everything you're saying, I'm like, dang, there's so much more I feel we could like do. Like in Dispo, we need to do this too. Like oh, selling like, the deal. Like we need to paint the picture the, for to the, the buyer. Be like, Mister Buyer, how are you gonna feel it's to have all a sales? It's all influence. Uh, Sorry, uh, ima- Mister Mister Investor, how, imagine. How, how great this house will be once you fix it up and you make it all nice and you sell it for a top dollar and you, you know, get your, all this profit. Your family's going to love, you know, they're going to see everyone in the community is going to see how good at flipping you are. It's, you're going to be able to, you're going to beautify the neighborhood. Imagine all that. Yeah. I think, I think you're right. Like we don't put, everybody should be getting trained and I train Jake, you know, on and off, but I train him for like maybe 10, 15 minutes a day. Maybe like, I think we don't put an emphasis on like, how important it is well people think in solar specifically and i know in wholesaling too like it comes down to dollars and cents right like people will be discounting making all these crazy concessions to make a deal happen no you just have weak value you're not presenting value yeah. for what you're offering why why are they going to go you with you? why would, good enough why would they why would they pay the premium to use you versus someone else why would they buy your house versus someone else it's like that's yeah what value are you providing to mm-hmm. get that the, the deal you need. Cause I was talking with uh, Jake and most of the guys like in order to really flip a house, you need a really good deal. You need a really good deal, like an amazing deal. So yeah, you got to get it sometimes in sellers right now, you know, whether their house is worth it or not they they want retail always. They, they just want as much as they can get. So you have to h- explain to them and help them understand like why you need it for that price. And if you're just like, let's just crunch the numbers. Like it's not going to work, but if you can, you know, help them paint the picture, see how you're going to help them, what value you're going to provide, you know, the convenience, the speed, the ease, you know, it's probably gonna, you're probably going to get better deals. And honestly, totally. painting the picture of, like, the actual situation to the seller, like, hey, like, this is, like, these are the actual facts of the market, right? Like, because a lot of times sellers want more, and their house is a piece of trash. I know, yeah. Like, to be real, the one we got in South Jordan for 344 Probably needed that three hundred. We probably needed it for lower. You know, we'll see how we do. We're selling it right now, and I think we'll be fine. But it's just like, but for her, that was like the lowest. Like that was a slap in the face because she didn't understand, and we didn't paint the picture like, hey, you know, this is all the work that needs to be get, getting done. We're gonna solve this problem, and eventually you're gonna have all this money where you don't have to worry about it. So that's why we got Barbara a while ago because we painted that picture. Her r- chilling with. In Price, Utah, no mortgage, you'd feel great. That's what got it done. Yeah. So, 
we need to improve on that thing. That's why it took the ultimate closure to come in here and yeah. remind us of the importance of sales Whip skills. Us into shape. I meant the what's that Franklin Covey training that you got? Like that guy says daily training. Like in if you want to master any skill, drums, you know, yeah, soccer, says, like, anything, it's daily incremental practice. Yeah, he says like salespeople are not born; they're made essentially through your bread. consistent practice. I was Let's not, talk about that. I you was, said yeah, I was not a natural born sales guy. Like I, I thought like oh, your personality. If people like you, it's like. They might like you. They might think you're a great guy. They ain't shaking hands on a deal if they don't trust you, if they don't believe what you're saying, if they're not confident. Like, you can be the greatest sales guy ever, but when it comes down to closing, like, if you're, like, nervous, if you have nervous energy, they're going to take that on. They're not going to, they're like, oh, like, oh, this guy's, like, feeling weird. Energy is so true, too, bro. It's You can feel it through the phone. You can feel it in person. It's crazy. Yeah, so, like, for example, if someone's, like, objecting to like in solar right there's hurricanes i was in florida for a little bit and they're worried about holes in their roof and all it's like oh don't worry mr customer like we just give you a bunch of buckets so when it leaks out like you just have a bunch of buckets and you get that right there you laugh get, at you get a smile to and then you go no like we have warranties in place to ensure you have a good experience who's your homeowner's insurance through mm-hmm concise like quick statement that's confident that you've rehearsed and said a billion times because that confidence translates to like yeah this guy sells a billion houses no yeah, matter if you've done one house or you've done yeah we get that all 000. the time like that you know the objections when they come you know what they are and you already know what they're why they're asking that like i get this all the time where are you guys located because we do this nationwide so why would someone care where we're located because they want to make sure we're legit that's pretty much it. So right. yeah, you, they're probably feeling credibility. They want credibility. They're probably feeling nervous. That's why they even so, asked. So, it. so I say, hey, um, that's a good question. You must be asking that because you want to know if we're we're credible. You know, uh, we do. D- I personally live in Salt Lake City, Utah, but we do deals all over the country, and uh, you know, uh, we love to work with you or something like that. And then they're like, oh, he understands why I'm asking that, and he answered it quickly and directly. Yeah. You know, if they have a problem with that, then then we can discuss it more. But you quick, concise answers. They don't feel like you're BS. And when you answer that long question, the long way you're route, talking, that's why you lose, is you lose in the deal. Because with practice, you learn the quick, concise answers. When so. you don't, when you're not practiced or trained, that's when you like just kind of wing it. Uh, on. We winged it. We've winged it a lot, just hoping that they'll get lost. What's the in number the one objection you guys hear that you struck? Like everyone in this industry is like, boom, like this. That's this probably is price. Like, price. Price is the is number low. one price objection. Is too low. Just because people. You know, they don't understand that... Uh, there is a different dynamic, too, with, like... Uh, I don't fully understand it, but between, like, selling someone something, right, like what you're doing with solar, and us buying something from a Absolutely. seller, right? They're they're holding their value, and you're trying to devalue to get a lower number. Like, it's a different Yeah, so we haven't sure. quite, like, understand... I, I don't quite understand, like, the psychology it's, behind it, it's but... It's difficult. What I find is if you, you actually... The things that work for me and d- getting them to understand is education. Like if you educate them on the comps, what's selling, how much it actually costs to flip a house, their options. Okay, hey, you can sell it with an agent, but this is what it'll look like. If you educate people, then they understand. But if if you just try to like talk it to them over the phone, like they're just gonna be like, this guy's just trying to rock me. That's what I've seen. Sure, people do not want to make a bad decision. Yeah. Number one, like in any in any transaction, and that's what you do in your sales. You educate, right? Hundred percent. That's why I have. That's why I like I have literal paper, no iPad, no gimmicks. I have a piece of beautiful white paper and a pen, and I literally college turn rule. It. No, it's it's all white. I like it to be crisp, nice. plain white. Yeah, I use sketch. I use sketch pads, kind of well, random, but that's another thing. This guy in Green Street, I met him in person, and he was saying, "Hey, look, I've had tons of people call me. I ain't doing business with anyone over the phone ever." As yeah, my he, man's just old school. As he did business with someone over the phone while we were there, he was like, "Hell, oh, this is my mortgage guy in Maryland or Maine. Let me, look, I gotta get, yeah." But that's how they are, right? They, yeah, I'm not making a same day decision, and yet they're they make cut, that cutting I mean, me really, an eighty three thousand dollar loan. And exactly. Check, you know, it's when you cut sales down. I mean, it's really essentially about helping someone make a decision, right? That's a win win, a win for them, a win for us. Yeah. No one's begrudgingly writing you a check, you know, like. That I mean, just doesn't no happen. No. no one's selling us their house unless there's a win there, and we need to help paint that win. And that's the funny thing about people like, oh, you take advantage of people. Some people have said that about business. I'm like, bro, you ain't taking advantage of anybody. This is their decision because y- you get them to sign a contract. They 
it's got to go through escrow. Got to, you know, it's got to go through paperwork. Like this is a long. Yeah, they decision. typically have thirty days to think about it. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, interesting. Yeah, there's there's horror stories in every industry, but it still just comes down to people understanding what you're there to do. Like, hey, this is what's in it for us. The horror stories are usually them what's in it being for taught you. and then saying, "I wasn't told that." Or like, nah. I mean, unless someone's a blatant liar, you know, sure. which I don't. That dude shouldn't. La- that person will probably not last very long if they're just lying to everybody no, in any not. sales. So easy come, easy go. But especially I th- nowadays. Yeah. I think yeah. early on too, like when I was when I was l- trying to learn some of these things, like you gotta get your butt next to the best dudes, like all those people that I've listed, Keith, you know, Rob, Jordan, like these guys are all titans of industry. They're the best. So don't take your advice how, from. Are they that older or? How, how? Mel, Mel's my age. Mel Hoff is um, my cousin. Keith's ten years my senior. Rob's about seven years older than me. Like these are when I was twenty two. These guys. So were these 30. guys just had more experience. It seems like. Yeah, they they had more experience. They'd been there and they had the numbers to back it. Like okay. they had the proof of concept, right? Like because what me and Corey do, I do this more than him. Is I compare our business and ourselves to forty five year olds. 40 year olds 50 year olds and i'm like yeah. dude i've been running the business for 10 to 15 years i'm like dang those guys are freaking good like we're we're doing like five six deals a month sometimes sometimes less sometimes more depending on the month sure um and these you just hear that these guys are doing like 20 30 deals a month and yeah. you just hear the you need you need the window wipers yeah right? you just hear the good big picture i mean not the big picture the good the good stuff and i'll be transparent with people i don't care like sometimes we don't close any deals because the freaking uh you know Pay, what, is, what would you say? Title companies suck, and it takes longer than it's supposed to. That's just how it is. That's that's part of the early grind. Yeah, no one no one posts their their failures out there. Like they, play, they post that highlight reel, not the blooper reel, baby. Sure, <laughs> but the blooper is how you become the highlight, though. You know, eventually is is by making the mistakes and then working working at it to. You know, it's funny. Wholesale, it's better. Wholesaling has like proof of concept, right? Like, it's made lots and lots of millionaires mm-hmm. over time, right? And real estate in general is even a bigger proof of concept. So, like, it's just about not quitting. Like, if you want to get to that millionaire status, like, wholesaling is a great avenue, I think. Yeah, like, for example. It's about sticking with it. Sticking with it. Like, this house we're doing in South Jordan. No, not South Jordan. Roy. I thought it was we were going to make, like, 20, 15K each because we're flipping it with someone. Now it might not be any money. You think that's stopping me? <laughs> ain't no way. Yeah, yep. South Jordan ain't looking too hot either. Yeah, I mean, it's just, are we going to let that stop us? No, but we're probably not going to make those mistakes again. Well, that's that's just how it is. I mean, that's the point. And that's the cool thing about getting a mentor, guru, someone to help you, because then they'll be like, dude, don't do that. That's a mistake. And you're like, oh, I didn't see that. Thank you. One thing that I'll put out there, too, like, I, I so I, I, my cousin Keith and I did our own company in Washington, and then I came back to Vivint for a year in Alabama, and that's where I, you know, a good friend of mine in Washington, his cousin was a, was a baller sales guy, and I just wanted to get better at sales. And so I met him, and I just kind of got to know him, thought he was a cool dude, but, like, I didn't negotiate a sign-on bonus. I didn't negotiate overrides to, like, make my clip. Like, every dollar that he earned, I got in value of learning skills from him. You know, one thing that the top performers are the top guys in wholesale. So we got done in McCalla, Alabama. I had a good day. I sold two on like a Thursday or Friday. I was like, yeah, man, good day. Like we get in the car and he's like ticked off. And we got it. We must, he might have picked me up at like 10 or 10, 15. And the whole ride home in the car, like he was just talking about this, this family, this young couple that he could not close. Mm-hmm. He was just like so frustrated. He's like, dude, do you think it was this or this? And finally we came to a conclusion like it was this objection and he should have handled it this way. And I was getting out of the car. I was like, dude, how'd you do today? He's like, uh, I, I got seven. The only, thing, that the, one. the only thing we talked about, the, in, the 45 minute car ride home was the one he didn't get. That's crazy. That's all he cared about. That's how it is in our business, too, though. We'll, we'll close a deal and I'll just be like, dude, this freaking seller is ghost to me. What the heck? They won't answer my calls. That's just how it is. I don't know why we're built that way. I don't know if it's such so much of a, like a, um, like a, personality thing like you want to f- be the best or if that's just how humans are built where no, they folk- it's called the uh, there's a theory about it like w- the fear of loss is like way stronger than the win- winning then yeah because we just closed the deal yesterday i'm not even thinking about it yeah. i don't even care move on 
Like, I want more, right? But the, and it's like, but I, I remember me losing this, the, a deal sure. like, oh, two weeks ago. I'm still mad about that. I'm like, man, if we would have just done this, we probably would have gotten that done. So it's interesting. I'm a big Seahawks fan. I only think about the interception on the one yard line, not the Super Bowl we won the year before. But that's right. Um, well, that's probably how you learn, right? Like if you're more focused on learning from your mistakes than your wins, then you're probably gonna be better at getting better quicker. I Phil think Jackson. You just need a healthy combination, right? Yeah, you also can't be too cynical and like too. You got to be positive and like focus on your wins, or you know you'll never be happy. For sure, Phil Jackson, coach of the Bulls and the Lakers, he said, "You're only a success when you've completed a successful act." So it, you sold a house yesterday. That, that that doesn't make you a success today. Yesterday, mm-hmm. you know, I think like Kobe and Jordan, these like massive winners. It's like they weren't satiated by a championship. Oh, bro! You know, Tom Brady. One of my favorite videos of him. He's being interviewed. He's won three Super Bowls, and the interviewer is like, you know, like what's your favorite Super Bowl? And he's just like, the next one. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it's it? It's the next deal. It's it's, it's the next so one. amazing. Like these, I think about these Olympic uh, swimmers, uh, anyone that wins a gold. It's like, dude, you've achieved the greatest pretty much the greatest height of your uh, athletic career and like what now now what uh, now what and they're like a lot of uh, i've heard a lot of olympic uh, athletes get like depressed after because they they like sure. reached a, a pinnacle or a height and then they're like well what do i do now like i've done what i've trained my whole life for and it's interesting that well they talk about like we need uh, I guess some chemical in the brain we need like to be pursuing something meaningful at all times right and like when we're when we're moving towards that goal, we get a little shot of that dopamine. Dopamine probably, and so like the consistently moving towards um, a meaningful goal is kind of like where that like fulfillment and I guess joy or peace or comes from. And there's no there's no end to the work yeah, that it's you never gonna to end, improvement, right? right? Like, like raising a family too. It's just like your kids always growing, so you're literally always. It's like it's going something's happening totally i mean you have to you know you work hard at your job you're going to make a living but if you work hard on yourself you'll make a fortune you know like right. success is something you attract by the person you become so the person you become is it that's your choices and habits like that's what distinguishes us from like the trees the sun the moon the stars alligators and random stuff like we have the dignity to make choices and decisions every day and i think in this podcast and thrive nation Number one is to take action. Thrive Number one. Ta- you gotta, if you, you get one call, thing from this podcast, if you what is it? Thrive, action. Take action. Ta- take action. Because you'll make mistakes, but like you'll naturally learn not to do that again. Like We all learn the stove's hot. doesn't matter if it takes you seven times. If you listen to Nate and Corey, maybe you don't have to touch it seven times in real estate and wholesaling. Maybe you only touch it once or twice, but the more that you can you know, soak in all the information from the people who've come before you, you're going to be that much further ahead right. in the game. You know, it's interesting. We'll kind of wrap it up, but it's interesting. Like you all hear the stories of like wholesalers that like they made a couple calls and they got like a $200,000 deal, like something sure. stupid. Right. And then, you know, who knows if those guys got what it takes to keep going. They didn't go through the furnace to, to realize, Hey, you're not yeah, going to another... run out eventually. Yeah. Like not only their money run out, but do, was that, is that person willing to make, 2,000 calls to get their next deal. You know? What you want is you want, whether it's like you think of it as yourself or your business, you want it to be a, a deal-generating machine, right? Something that can produce a result like no matter what, mm-hmm. right? And so you want to create that. It's not about getting one deal. No, never about one deal. Cause it's never about yeah, one it's deal. It's about always being able to get deals I through, a, a, through a system. I had an interesting thought. I want to ask you guys about so this metaverse I don't know anything about it but uh, I was just thinking like you know the we're talking about how the joy you feel and the pursuit of something great in in real life improving yourself or your business you know I feel like it could be a very bad thing if people are in like a virtual universe where like they're they're just not it's just fake right like could that I mean you could technically think like ready player one yeah he's like living in a trailer but He's, He's like the man. The time of his life. Well, well, you could probably think the internet's like that too. But like, I'm just like, man, I feel, I believe, that like we're coming at the end of times, and I feel like a, a metaverse or something like that where people aren't even going out and they're living in like a virtual reality. That's that ish ain't gonna end well. If like you don't even strive to improve your life, but you're like, 
the man and some virtual that that that's like an extension of like social media, which is social media. I think already is can just, is bad. I'm extremely competitive, so I love it. Social media? No. Well, yeah, I love the metaverse. I love social media because everyone that wastes one minute of time, like that's ga- ground that I'm gaining because I'm practicing. I'm my reps are on the piano. My reps are in my sales. In real life, baby. My my re- in real time, real place. My reps are in shooting the ball outside when it's cold during COVID and no one's out there. Like. Developing real, real actual, real skills. Like I, yeah. I had a MySpace back in the day, real quick. Yeah, and, that's true. And like I, my grandpa was like, "Hey, if you took all the time that you spent on that thing and you applied it towards stuff that you actually cared about, you'd you'd be the most talented guy that ever walked." Yeah. And I, w- I bring know? that up because I just think everyone has to be aware. There's a s- such thing as a dopamine overload and being addicted to screens and metaverses sure. and all that stuff. Like. You want to put, and I, I'm speak, preaching to the choir because I, I, I even get on my phone way too much. Like you want to spend your time in stuff that's actually going to provide value to the, the world, right? So, yeah. to people, to people, right? Like, yeah, like hanging out. Like it's way better doing this podcast with you guys than it has been it's playing on my phone. Text in a group message. Either. Text in oh, a group message. For sure. I even think Zoom calls. Like I'd much rather get with you guys with the energy than let me let me hit you up over the phone like a little Zoom call, bro. Mm-hmm. And even in sales, like I person to person like I, I've sold stuff over the phone and you can definitely do it it's you, your words and your tonality and your statements and your conciseness is what's going to come across but like I think you get low hanging person, fruit on the phone oh person to person though, person man. to person is just level. way better it's phone zoom person and I would do person all day all day for sure last last question before we wrap up so why did you decide to do sales as opposed to some other field that's a great question. Um, I might know the answer. It's, it's a challenge. W- for sure. And I think more so than anything, like, it's all sales. Everything we're doing, people have different diets. And, hey, what do you watch on Netflix? You should watch this show. I'm trying to tell you to watch a show. I'm trying to influence you. Hey, man, we I went to this restaurant. It was so good. And t- like, it, we're, we're in the business. If you've got kids, like, you want your kids to make good choices and decisions. We're all trying to influence. And... You know, it's like, well, how do you how do you do that effectively? That's fascinating to me. Like, mm. how to how to influence people to make good decisions and good choices, especially if you got a good heart and you want to help people. Yeah. Okay. So you want to learn how to influence people better. Yep. You know, I think of that what you just said, and it's interesting. Like, just in normal life, like I was talking to this guy about a Netflix show. Like you said that he liked, and he was so animated and excited about it. I was like, man, I'll check this out because he he was really excited. Like even with that one uh, with Freddie told us about the animated show. What is it, Invincible? I, was, I don't really care about that, but I was like, Freddie really liked that. He was pretty excited. And I think sales, like you said, if you go into someone's house and you're excited about your product and you're oh, like, look, man. this is going to help you out with the s- situation you're in, what you're trying to go. I, this is, I'm excited for you if you I, decide to do this. I fist bump people in, in like the deals all the time and like high five and like, because I'm going to raise the temperature. Like they're going to know like, man, by doing this, I'm going to feel this way. You know, people people forget the words you say. People aren't going to remember like this podcast. You like remember that in, feeling. In, they're going to remember how how you made them feel. That's how That's people are going to leave you. That's very interesting too with wholesaling because we rarely get excited about our low offer for them because it is low. It's lower than they'll they'll get normally. But you're right. Like we were like, hey, look, I'm excited that we're going to help you solve this problem and get this freaking house off of your. This is going to be great. The peace of mind, like the way you're going to feel once this burden's been lifted. Like, can you imagine like having this household, having the free flow cash to go do what you love to do? Like, this is going to be great. Here's what the offer is. Like, let's get this rolling. Yeah. yeah. It comes let's back do to this. Painting that picture, right? I think one thing I've got investors drive nation that from this podcast is by helping yourself and the seller understand the, the picture of what you're trying to paint and the goal they're trying to help, that will help a ton with your success. I'm never worried about my commissions. Could care less. I don't even I don't even cash them half the time. Like, I spent a whole year with Vivint checks you're that li- I didn't even cash. You're like, uh, what's that boxer? who did, Floyd Mayweather has, like, the $300 <laughs> million dollar check that never cashed it because he just likes to have it for some reason. I'm a weirdo, but, yeah, I... I it's, tr- so, it's so I, interesting. I truly care about their experience, and I know if I take care of them, that I'm going to be taken care of. I'll be compensated by the value I provided them. Like, yeah. that's going to come back to if me. If you can truly believe it. that you're helping them achieve their goal, then you're excited. And maybe I've kind of lost sight of that as I've been doing sales. Like, But it is exciting to think, like, we've helped a lot of people. You know, they would be in bad situations without our help, you know. 
Uh, and that's and that can breed you confidence. Like your confidence on the phone to know that like no, you don't want to go to this guy down the road that's going to lowball you an extra 6 grand and do you dirty and then and and bait and switch you like you don't like either you're going to do this today with me or you're never going to do it. Mm-hmm. It's it's happening with me or no one else. It's do or die like this is what it is and and it's going to be with love and like smiles and camaraderie. You do it me or you ain't leaving this house. That's probably what uh, why John Martinez talks about like hey like where are you going? And then he asked questions like, what would that be like? How would that make you feel? Yeah, man. Like, picture he, perfect questions. Yeah, he's like helping you paint that picture for you. Dang, that's and so And then crazy. we could throw in, like, yeah, imagine. I think this. I'm so, I think I'm pretty good at sales. Yeah. Uh, and then this just brings me back, like, dude, being an ultimate salesman is a lifelong pursuit that no one will achieve only through practice daily. Like, it's amazing. Like, I think I'm good, but I'm good. Like, I'm not there yet. Right. Always something to improve on. Always something to improve on. So that's something from this podcast I'll tell you. We're about to go to town on some training. Awesome. Do it. Dope. Well, Investor Dive Nation, you've been with us for a while. This was a great podcast, mainly talking about sales, which was great. Uh, Sam, Royson, we've really enjoyed having you on here. Coming on, man. uh, Anytime, guys. You know, if 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 we get enough love from Investor Thrive Nation, we might have you on here again. (laughs) If they they just chant your name, bring bring it on back. Let's do it. All right, later, guys. See you guys. Bye. Thanks.